Are you a fan of horror movies? Well, get ready to be creeped out by something even more terrifying. 10 Historic Events That Are Creepier Than a Horror Movie From man-Russian scientists conducting mind-controlled experiments on homeless orphans to the forgotten victim of the Lincoln assassination, these true stories will make your blood run cold. However, before we begin our video, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon. Let's get started. Number 10. The Astronaut's Mysterious Visitor Imagine being the first person from your country to travel to space. That's what happened to Yang Lewai in 2003. While floating in his capsule, he heard a mysterious knocking sound. It sounded like someone knocking an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. Lawai couldn't find the source of the sound, and neither could scientists back on Earth. Some people even thought it might be friendly aliens. But after inspecting the capsule, it seems that the sound was likely caused by the spacecraft's metallic surface contracting in the cold vacuum of space. Other astronauts have reported similar sounds, suggesting it's related to temperature changes. So the mystery may not be so mysterious after all. Number 9. The British Dombey Invasion The Black Plague was a terrifying time in history. And for the people of London, it was a real-life horror story. The government tried to contain the disease by locking the sick inside their own homes with armed guards stationed outside to keep people from helping. But conditions inside the houses were terrible, and the infected fought back. Families even killed guards to escape. When whole streets were quarantined, neighbors rioted and massacred the guards. The plague refugees had to flee with no resources and faced hostility from other villages. Some were even robbed after being let in for help. It was a sad and violent time, and it shows how people can become desperate when faced with a deadly disease. It's like something out of a zombie movie, but unfortunately, it was all too real for the people of England. Number 8. Waterloo Soldiers Were Ground Up to Fertilizer The Battle of Waterloo was a disastrous event that claimed the lives of 60,000 soldiers. But what many of those soldiers didn't know was that their remains would become an important part of English gardening. A year after the battle, companies collected the exposed bones of soldiers and horses and ground them into a powder to use as fertilizer. They did the same thing on other Napoleon battlefields too. In total, they collected over a million bushels of bones. The remains were mixed together with other additives and sold to local farmers to help grow their crops. It might sound strange, but the oil from the bones proved to be a very effective fertilizer ingredient. Some newspapers even praised this practice, saying that a dead soldier is a most valuable article of commerce. So while the Battle of Waterloo was a tragic event, it did have an unexpected impact on English agriculture. Number 7. Venerable Pope Pius XII's Climatic Death When Venerable Pope Pius XII died in 1958, he had one simple request. He did not want to be embalmed. Unfortunately, his personal physician, Geliazi Lissi, was woefully unqualified and developed his own method of embalming. This process soaked the body in natural oils and wrapped it in cellophane for 24 hours. However, this allowed internal gases to build up and when the body was carried in procession, it burst open due to the heat. Gelizi Lisi was forced to re-embalm the body overnight, but it was too late. Pius XII's nose and fingers had already flown off and the body had become discolored. Mourners grieved over an emerald green corpse and nearby guards fainted from the odor. Pius XII and Galiazi Lissi's careers came to an end due to this mishap. Today, Galiazi Lissi is the only person to have ever been banished from Vatican City. Number 6. George Washington Comes Back from the Dead Dr. William Thornton was a famous physician in his time who had a crazy idea to bring George Washington back from the dead. Washington had died in 1799, but Thornton believed he could cure everything that was wrong with him. Washington had been afraid of being buried alive, so he arranged for his body to not be put into the vault for three days after his death. Thornton's plan was to lower Washington's body into cold water and then swaddle him in blankets to slowly increase his body temperature. He would then pump air into Washington's lungs and inject sheep's blood to restart his heart. However, this proposal was rejected. Thornton believed for 20 years that his experiment could have saved the president's life, but science suggests otherwise. While Thornton's idea may seem crazy today, it shows the lengths people will go to try to bring someone back from the dead. Number 5. Ivan Pavlov experimented on homeless orphans too. Ivan Pavlov is known for his experiments on conditioning dogs, but his research didn't stop there. One of Pavlov's pupils, Nikolai Krasnogorsky, 
continued the experiments on humans by using subjects from a local orphanage. Krasnogorsky strapped the children with leather and metal headgear to keep their mouths open, and then measured their pooled saliva while electronic pads hit their wrists whenever food was about to be distributed. The children were force-fed cookies and bad-tasting food, and their reactions were recorded. While this research was highly unethical, it advanced the scientific understanding of human conditioning. Unlike Pavlov's dogs, humans were less responsive to slight changes in stimuli. Through the suffering of Krasnogorsky's children, the groundwork was laid for the modern theory of cognitive behavioral therapy. While Pavlov's experiments on dogs are famous, his research on homeless orphans is a darker part of his legacy. Number 4. Minnick Wallace's Museum of Horrors Robert Peary, the explorer who reached the North Pole in 1909, brought six Eskimos from Greenland to New York in 1897 to perform physicals on them. Among them was a seven-year-old boy, Minnick, and his father, Kissick. They were put on display in the Arctic exhibit of the American Museum of Natural History, where visitors would gawk at them. Unaccustomed to the germs in New York, four of the Eskimos, including Kissick, died. The museum buried the log wrapped in fur instead of Kissick's body which was later dissected and bleached. Minnick's father's corpse was displayed just a few feet away from his own exhibit. Minnick campaigned for the return of his father's body, which was refused until he threatened to reveal that Peary had fathered two Eskimo children. Eventually, Minnick returned to the Arctic and died in the Spanish flu epidemic in 1916. Number 3. John Scott Harrison's Cadaver Chop Shop John Scott Harrison was the son of a U.S. president and father to a future president. When he died, his family made sure to protect his grave with three large stones bound with cement and hired a guard. Unfortunately, despite these precautions, his body was stolen less than 24 hours after burial. Suspicious of a nearby medical school, the family obtained a search warrant and found a box of body parts, the corpse of a six-month-old baby, and a masked naked body hanging from rope. The mask was removed to reveal that it was John Scott Harrison. The nearby medical school had been using corpses to study, including that of Augustus Devon, who was later found pickled in a barrel at the University of Michigan. The theft of bodies for scientific study was a common occurrence in the 19th century, and laws were eventually put in place to stop it. Number 2. The Serial Killer in the London Blitz During the London Blitz in World War II, England faced constant bombing from the Germans. However, a serial killer named Gordon Frederick Cummins made the situation worse with his six-day spree of murder and assault. Cummins was a Royal Air Force member stationed in northern London. He mainly attacked prostitutes during his week-long rampage. His first victim, Evelyn Hamilton, was sexually assaulted, robbed, strangled, and left in a gutter. Over the next three days, three more women were found dead. On the fourth day, Cummins attacked again, but was interrupted during the assault. The police traced him through his service respirator, left at the scene, and a fingerprint on a can opener he used in one of the murders. Cummins was sentenced to death and executed in June 1942, earning the nickname Blackout Ripper. Number 1. The Lincoln Assassination's Forgotten Victim The assassination of Abraham Lincoln was a tragic event in the history of the United States. However, there was another victim that has been forgotten over time. Clara Harris was not originally planning to attend Ford's Theater on the night of the assassination. She was there at the request of Mary Todd Lincoln with her then-boyfriend, Major Henry Rathbone. When John Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln, Rathbone tried to apprehend the assassin, but was stabbed in the process. Booth escaped, leaving Clara and Henry in shock. Many years later, they got married. Clara, unable to part with her blood-stained dress, had preserved it behind a walled-off closet, hoping it might summon Lincoln's ghost. Henry was guilt-ridden for not stopping the tragedy and heard voices in the walls, blaming him for Lincoln's death and ordering him to avenge the fallen president. In a murder straight out of The Shining, Rathbone recreated the assassination on Christmas Eve in 1883, shooting Clara and stabbing himself. Clara died, and Henry spent the rest of his life in an asylum. So that's it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to get all the latest updates.